around the crypto world for a while, you've probably come across a whole bunch of crypto terms and expressions that have left you scratching your chin or your head trying to figure out what the heck these people are talking about. But the thing is, knowing what these terms mean and understanding them makes you feel like you're part of the crypto community. So this episode is dedicated to all my fellow crypto nerds. And for those of you who don't know what this means, well, you're about to find out. Let's start with an easy one, GM. It simply means good morning. Now the crypto community is a global community and they start the day by saying good morning to each other. Normally they do this on Twitter where somebody will tweet out GM and their followers will reply with the GM as well. So GM to you. And where there's a GM, there obviously has to be a GN as well, which means good night. Crypto community will wish each other good night before going to bed and waking up in the morning and starting with the GM once again. CT. CT is short for Crypto Twitter. Now for those of you who haven't been on Twitter for too long, Twitter has evolved into this global information pool for everything cool about crypto. Breaking news, FUD news, FOMO news, and all the news and information on everything that's happening in the crypto universe. By the way, CT can also be used to refer to the Crypto Twitter community as a whole. GMI or WAGMI. You might have come across this because it's all over Twitter and the internet these days. Hashtag Wagby. It stands for gonna make it or we all gonna make it, which is basically a high state of conviction that things are gonna turn out to be great in the future. For example, just bought my first Bitcoin, GMI. So if there's a GMI, then there's also got to be an NGMI, which stands for not gonna make it. That is basically a pessimistic view or a sign that you've done something that you truly regret. For example, I just sold that really valuable crypto punk for just one ETH. NGMI. Probably nothing. Now, this is where it starts to get a little bit confusing because probably nothing actually means, oh my God, can you believe that actually happened? For example, do you remember that time that Visa, the credit card company, that massive credit card company that everybody uses around the world, bought their first crypto punk? That's right, they did that. And then the internet exploded with, Visa just bought a punk. Probably nothing. What they're actually trying to say is, oh my God, the world is about to change and it is probably something big. Ape, or aping into something. Now, this has nothing to do with gorillas or chimpanzees. It means taking a relatively large position compared to the overall size of your portfolio. And it normally happens when you can't control yourself. You see a coin, you say, shall I buy it? Shall I not buy it? Shall I buy it? Shall I not buy it? And then when you buy it, you buy too much of it. For example, if your entire portfolio is just say $1,000 and you buy $500 worth of Solana, it means you ate into Solana. Be honest now, you've done that, haven't you? Over there, you can see it. Over there, you can see it. Bend to me. Over there was the magnificent building, Burj Khalifa, the tallest building in the world. I think it's still the tallest building in the world. And at the base of the building, they've got these amazing water fountains that are set to music, which is just beautiful to watch. Sit back with a cup of coffee and watch the fountains for a while. It's an amazing experience. But over here, we're still talking about crypto slang. And the next piece of slang is something called few, which is a short form for few understand. Now, it's used to make a point at the end of a sentence, much like probably nothing. For example, Visa just bought a punk. Few, full stop which means few people understand how big a deal it is that Visa bought a crypto punk. Get it? Then there's mint, not to be confused with Pudina or minting, which is the act of actually issuing a piece of art on the blockchain for the very first time by either the artist or the collector. For example, that's an amazing NFT collection. You should mint it. Get it? Just love the design of these old souks. Now, there's another term that you may have come across because it's all over the internet, especially Twitter, which is hashtag IYKYK, which stands for, if you know, you know, which is basically used when you're talking about inside information or things that very few people know about. So IYKYK, 
If you know, you know, which also means if you don't know, you don't know. Normies. Now, this one is quite easy. It does what it says on the tin. These are normal people, large masses of people who've decided to not yet explore the crypto space or have chosen to stay out of the Twitter space. Me? I'm definitely not a normie. That stunning piece of architecture is called the Burj Al Arab and is rumored to be the only seven star hotel in the world, although I'm not sure about that. You know what else I'm not sure about? Shilling. Now, shilling is really not a nice thing to do. It's when someone is trying to promote a project but they've got a hidden or ulterior motive and it's usually when they hold a large amount of crypto in that project. For example, that guy, he's got a large bag of Dogecoin, which is why he's going around shilling it to normies. Get it? So those were some of the fun crypto jargons that I introduced to you from Dubai. But now to get a little more technical, I'd like to invite a very special guest from the WazirX team. This is Rohit Kundliwal and you might recognize him because every week he does YouTube sessions on the WazirX YouTube page talking about all things crypto and how to get more involved with the community. Rohit, welcome to Connect. Thanks a lot, uh, Nikhil. It's it's a pleasure to be here with you on the show, and uh, I'm I'm pretty excited to discuss a few a few jargons in crypto community. But before we get into jargons, tell us a little more about what you're doing on Wazirx's YouTube channel. On Wazirx YouTube channel, we generally talk about what's going on in the cryptoverse mm -hmm. every week on Tuesday. We go live on the show, and uh, what we discuss is mainly what's the trend in the crypto uh, system and some technical analysis of what's happening in the on-chain data and, okay. and some, some more interesting topics that uh, every week that, that keeps on happening in the crypto space. So if you're getting involved in Cryptoverse, definitely something for people to check out, right? Absolutely, yes. Okay, so now let's get into the fun stuff. As you know, we've covered a whole bunch of different crypto jargons and some of them are quite funny. And I wanted you to come in and give us some of your favorite crypto jargons and also maybe get a little technical with it as well. So why don't we start? What's your first one? The first jargon that I want to discuss is whale. So okay. a whale, a whale in crypto conversation is somebody who has a lot of cryptocurrencies in his account, especially bitcoins. So anybody, when whenever somebody says that a whale transferred some bitcoins, it means that somebody, a big player in the crypto system, transferred some bitcoins to somebody else. So everybody needs to understand whenever they see something like a word whale in in Twitter, so they they are talking about some big player in the crypto space. Are, are you a whale? I mean, which which coin are you like holding a large amount of? The the favorite coin that I hold is Ethereum, but by no means I am a whale. Uh, hopefully, in the next uh, ten years, fifteen years, somewhere close to ten percent of whale would be more than more than enough. Let's get a quick prediction from you. In two years' time, what's going to be better to hold, Ethereum or Solana? I think Ethereum is going to still be the better one because Ethereum is going to be the first place where all the dApps are going to be published. Fair enough. You heard it here first on Connect. Okay, what's the next jargon we're going to talk about? The next jargon that we are going to talk about is called a dry powder. In crypto space, whenever somebody says that they're they're out of dry powder mm -hmm. or they have a little bit of dry powder, that ju that generally means that they have some fiat currencies in their account and they are waiting for the dip to buy. So, so it's basically dry powder means. It's like having cash in hand. Yes. I always tell first-time investors that make sure that you always have some cash in hand in your portfolio because if you don't, when the dip happens, you're not going to have any money to buy coins in the dip. You can't buy the dip if you don't have any cash in hand. Exactly. So you need dry powder to shoot the dip or to buy the dip whenever the time lies. Is that what it's called? Shooting the dip? No, I just made it up right now. <laughs> no, it, it kind of makes sense because I think dry powder also connects to the time when people used muzzle loading rifles and you needed to have dry gunpowder to put into your yes. into your rifles. If your, if your gunpowder wasn't dry, you couldn't use it. So yeah, I think that's where dry powder comes from. In South India, I think one of the dishes to the sides of Italy is also called a dry powder. That's gunpowder. That is different. It's gun That's called gunpowder. Yeah. <laughs> and it's gun fiery. Powder. Yes, it is. Okay, so now I'd actually like you to get a little technical because we've, we've spoken about a lot of fun slangs and, and fun sort of abbreviations in uh, the crypto space. There are a few technical things that you can also talk about, right? 
Yes. So uh, the most interesting thing about crypto is that you can analyze the the amount of crypto that is being transferred from one account to the other account. Okay. If you combine this information from around the world and you and you collate it together, you can you can find some very interesting uh, uh, you know insights from these uh, from these data points. One of the interesting point is IOMAP or I O M A P. The full form of this is in and out of money around price. So. Uh, we can share us in and out of money around price okay complicated explain so in and out of money around price is simply talking about how many bitcoins or how many addresses of bitcoins are in the money or are they out of money around the price of bitcoin which is right now for example i'll i'll explain if right now the price of bitcoin is around $45000 mm -hmm. then between forty thousand dollar and fifty thousand dollar, how many bitcoins are purchased when when it was high and right now it is not in the money? So if okay. I purchase Bitcoin at fifty thousand dollars, then the the those bitcoins are right now out of the money. But okay. if I purchase the Bitcoin at thirty thousand dollars right now at the current price, the, uh, the that Bitcoin specifically is in the money. So what we can see from this is how many bitcoins that were purchased are actually in profit or in loss. So IOMAP signifies how many accounts are in loss or in profit. So uh, and clearly, if there are many bitcoins that are out of money, then the chances of price of bitcoin going to that price again yeah. is higher. Okay, understood. Basically, in layperson's terms, this is what we would call a trading bouncer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it generally signifies uh, at what price level the price of Bitcoin will come again or it okay. will go back to and uh, that's where the volume of Bitcoins are present. Okay, for those of you who didn't understand what Roy just said, this is why you should watch his YouTube show every Tuesday live on the Wazir X YouTube channel, right? Because he explains terms like this and it becomes easier for you to understand and grasp. Okay, so last one, which one are we going to hit them with? The last uh, jargon that I'm going to discuss today is something called as coin days destroyed, which means as I it, so it sounds like a Tom Cruise movie. <laughs> it does, right? It does. So coin days destroyed, uh, right? Yeah, and uh, it it's just signifies that how many bitcoins were days were destroyed when bitcoins was transferred from one person to another. For example, I'll give if I held a bitcoin for ten days. Mm -hmm. and I transfer those Bitcoins to you after 10 days, then when I transferred those Bitcoins, 10 days of coins were destroyed because after 10 days, I transferred it to you. So okay. what this signifies is if the number of coin days destroys starts increasing, then the older Bitcoins are being transferred from one account to another, which means the hodlers of uh, Bitcoin are actually trading their Bitcoin now, which means that may be the top. That's very interesting. So coin day is destroyed. If it, if it starts to increase, signifies that you may be at the top of that cycle or that, or that bull run. Absolutely. And right now we are nowhere close to it. We're nowhere close to it? No. Good to know because I don't know how many coin days destroyed we're, we're, we're on right now, but it's good to know that we're not anywhere near the top. Rohit, it's been a real pleasure talking to you and hopefully we'll have more of these conversations and get to learn a lot more from you as well. Thanks a lot, Nikhil. It was a pleasure to be here and uh, absolutely looking forward for another session. And before we go, I'm going to leave you with one final piece of jargon, which is something that we all love. It's LFG. In other words, let's go. Thanks, Rohit. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Nikhil. Cheers.